We developed this brochure. I only needed 20 of these brochures because there were only about 20 customers on the high street that were potentially ever going to buy from me. But I thought, if I get one customer out of this piece of marketing, I will have achieved a great job. Well, that brochure ended up costing about £200 per brochure. So if you actually looked at it on a cost unit basis, it was not a good idea. But if you look at the results we obtained from it, we actually ended up with three customers as a result of doing that. Not all all aboard at once, but over a period of time. And then our customer base expanded to River Island, Monsoon Accessories. We did a bit for Dorothy Perkins. We ended up being a major supplier to British Home Stores and Asda and George, just to name a few. So it really worked for us. And that was really how Diva continued. And we had a very, very successful time. And um, I ended up... um, employing a football team. Well, I ended up applying one more than a football team. But again, I think in an early stage of a startup business, football team is the number in which you as an owner-manager contain, maintain control, need to look after the detail yourself, albeit somebody else is working on it for you, you need to be aware of it. And um, D- Diva was successful for a number of reasons. Um, and I put it down to the culture of detail. There was amazing detail culture, which many businesses don't necessarily want to do, but I do feel that that's a big mistake. You need to be focused on the detail. Detail, detail, detail. From the product you supply through to assessing whether your costings were right and whether you're making the margin that you expected. The other one was being absolute experts in our field. We didn't just position ourselves as selling cosmetics. We were marketing a dream, I suppose. We, we made sure that to our customers, who were the high street retail outlets, not only were we experts in their consumers, what was driving them, what made a difference in their positioning on the high street, so that we didn't go into British home stores and sell them the same things we were selling mother care, we made sure that they knew we knew the difference. But we also were absolute experts in the field of colour cosmetics. And I'm sure this is why many people work for me, because their girls that work for me travelled. And we used to go to the Far East, the States, New York, LA, all over Europe, just to make sure that if there was a new packaging, new colour, new product, that we were one of the first to hear about it. And we could come back and we could change it a little, develop it, take it on board and present it to our customers. And I think those two elements made Diva truly, truly successful. Now, I decided to sell Diva in a poignant moment in my life when I felt that I actually wasn't um, spending enough time with my son. And, And in true lady format, I'm allowed to change my mind. And this time, unlike the English school, which only took me six months, this took me about four and a half years. And I did feel that I'd actually achieved a massive amount with Diva. But I felt that I was never going to get that time back. And on I knew I could never get it back for William, but when I fell pregnant for the second time, I had that moment where I thought, you know what, now's the time to sell. Intuition told me that I needed to sell. So when I was about eight weeks pregnant, I set in motion my exit strategy. And that was an absolute crucial part of Diva's development. Because one thing I recognised as the owner of this business, and because of my culture of detail, I was pivotal to a lot of its success because I was involved in every single pie. And in fact... That was good while I was working there, but when I wanted to get out, it wasn't quite so good because suddenly the girls that worked for me, we called them the diva dolls, were very reliant on me for any decision. And I had to extrapolate myself to make sure that they were empowered to make their own decisions. So not only did I have to remove myself from the day-to-day running of the business, I also felt that it was in their best interest to invest in training, which we did at a, a great degree to encourage them to understand their own job roles, to understand what they were responsible for and how they couldn't refer to me in everything. And, of course, being pregnant was ideal because I said I was going on maternity leave. So there was a huge um, uptake by the, t- by the girls there that worked there to get on board and to take responsibility. And because of that, when I came to sell the business on the 24th of October is when I actually sold it, I was able to leave the business um, without ever having to work another day. And that was really a very crucial moment in the world of Diva.